ज्ञान ज्ञान Translation. This is the verse spoken by Sukracharya to Bali Maharaj. You have promised to give him, namely Vishnu, three steps of land in charity. But when you give it, he will occupy the three worlds. You are a master. You do not know what a great mistake you have made. After giving everything to Lord Vishnu, you have no means of livelihood. How then shall you live? The point. Bali Maharaj might argue that he had promised only three sets of land, but Shukra Acharya, being a very learned Brahmana, immediately understood that this was the plan of Hari, who had falsely appeared there as a Brahmacharya. The word Mudha Bhamatish Yate Katama revealed that Shukra Acharya was a Brahmana of the priestly class. Such priestly Brahmanas are mostly interested in receiving remuneration from their disciples. Therefore, when Shukracharya saw that Bali Maharaj had risked all of his possessions, he understood that this would cause havoc, not only to the king, but also to the family of Shukracharya, who was dependent on Maharaj from his mass mercy. This is the difference between a Vaishnava and a Smarta Brahmana. The Smarta Brahmana is always interested in material profit, whereas a Vaishnava is interested only in satisfying the Supreme Person of God. From the statement of Shukracharya, it appears that he was in all respects a smarter Brahmana, interested only in personal gain. Shri Kamaya Malvalakam Vishvakamaya Kamishri Sarva Swam Vishvaveda La Murha Vaitishya Sri Katam. You have promised to give him three steps of land in charity, but when you give it, you will occupy the three worlds. You are a rascal, you do not know what a great mistake you have made. After giving everything to God Vishnu, you will have no means of livelihood. How then shall we live? Today is Vaman Dwanashi, the day in which Lord Vaman Dev appeared in this universe. Even though it was many millions of years ago, the date is still kept and celebrated. This is one verse from the many verses, it covers many chapters, this section of Vaman Dwanashi, one verse. In the section describing how Bali Maharaj surrendered everything to Lord Vishnu and the consequences thereof. This particular verse, the last two lines, Sarvas from Vishnu Veda, Ram Murha Bhartishya Se Katam, was cited by Shiva Bhaktis Tansvetra Thakur as an example of the materialistic mentality in approaching God. We should approach God to get something, not to give something. And he considered his disciple, Ali Maharaj, a great fool because he wanted to give everything to God. He was wondering, how are you going to maintain it? And he was thinking also, how am I going to maintain myself? If you don't have anything, then I don't have anything. I can bless you and you can get money, but then you have to give something to me, share the load with me. So this Srimad Bhagavatam is a book of Rasa in the very beginning of this prayer. Nigma Kaupata Rasalitam Palam Shukamakara Matita Prasangitam Tibita Bhagavatam Rasanavayam Hura Hura Sikavu Bhagavaka. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of the tree of the desire tree of Vedic knowledge. Desire tree means in the Vedas you can get anything you want by following the Vedic process either really or artificial. That means you can get elevation from heavenly planets, beautiful light, lordship over a kingdom, mystic powers, so many things you can get, really, or artificial if you may consider yourself equal to God, one with God, you can also extract such a process, of, of such a false understanding from the Vedic literature. So everything is a desire tree. But the right and fruit of that desire tree is full of rasa, which means juice, spiritual juice. 
So this uh, rasa, sugar day, goes from let's make it even sweeter by tasting it and redistributing it. Therefore, we are recommended to go on hearing this right up to the time of death and right up to the time of liberation. Go on hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, sometimes, some Vaishnavas may consider that the tenth canto, that is considered the best part of the Bhagavatam, in as much as it describes the pastimes of the original personality of Godhead, not Sri Krishna. But actually, it's not that all the other incarnations are simply all useless, but the misunderstanding. All the incarnations of Krishna are all. Krishna, none different from Krishna. And all the pastimes of the Supreme Lord with his devotees are full of wonderful rasa, transcendental exchanges for ecstasy and bliss. So we find here in this story of Bali Maharaj and Bhavandi, as Bali Maharaj himself says to Bhavandi, that you, by performing your activities, you execute many things. So, in this story, there are so many instructions. What is the character of a devotee? What is the detachment of a devotee? What is the attachment, detachment from material things? What is the attachment of a devotee to the Supreme Lord? How a devotee is prepared to take all risks to satisfy Lord Vishnu? How the Supreme Lord, Vishnu, is totally unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to do. That how he is unlimited. Some exhibition of his unlimited potency is given. How he always favors his devotees, even though it may appear that he's not favoring them. We also see how he is the supreme chief. He is the supreme everything. So if he wants to cheat somebody, he's also the supreme chief. That is shown in this pastor. There are many wonderful uh, lessons to be got from this story of Bali Maharaj and Brahmanji. Most uh, prominent in my mind is, actually this is one of my favorite pastimes, is how Bali Maharaj, he was absolutely fixed in his Krishna consciousness. Now even, even though Brahmanji cheated him, humiliated him, took everything away from him. He remained in his position of power. Actually, this story begins, uh, the sequence of this, in the sequence of this story, as described in Srimad Bhagavatam, we have the appearance of various incarnations of the Lord, because this, this story begins with the demons and the demigods churning the milk ocean. So, when churning the Supreme Lord, uh, first of all it was he who gave the order to do them. Then the Supreme Lord appeared as Kurma incarnation. Then again, uh, he, he appeared as Mohini Murti. So, and then again, a little later on, as Vamadhi. So, the Supreme Lord is appearing in different forms. In his narration, what happened was, and the story is well known, how the demons and the demigods were, although they are naturally opposed to each other, they cooperated, because it was required that they had to cooperate. So, generally the demons don't cooperate with the demigods, and vice versa, and for good reasons too, because demons Actually, both the demigods and the demons are interested in material enjoyment. The demigods are interested in material enjoyment, but with a sense of subservience to the Supreme Lord, whereas the demons, they're only interested in material enjoyment, and they don't like the Supreme Lord. But anyway, they cooperate. It's required that they cooperate to churn the milk ocean so as to produce the nectar. But when the nectar was produced, as we can see, this picture of Mohini Murti. Uh, Lord Vishnu appeared and made sure that the demons didn't get him. So the demons were upset, not surprising, having gone to so much trouble. And uh, 
even having died in the process and being scorched by the heat and poisonous fumes coming from the mouth of Vasuki, the snake that was used as the rope of Chani, he milk ocean, and then they were revived by the Supreme Lord. But he didn't want them to be to get the nectar. Demons don't get any nectar, only devotees get nectar. So uh, then you can see, walk outside and see how the demons don't get any nectar. Even they have an invitation nectar that, that seems to be a common pastime, sitting on the steps out here drinking beer, at least yesterday afternoon they were doing that. That's only a perverted reflection of nectar, that's not nectar. So, Lord Vishnu didn't want them to get it, so he cheated them very nicely. This was his first cheating in this sequence. He cheated. Now, even before that, he had, he had advised the demons that you should take the backside of, of Vasudev, hold on to the backside. So they thought, well, if he's telling us we should take the front side, which was actually Lord Vishnu's purpose, because the front side is very difficult to hold. With all the poisonous fumes coming from Vasuki's mouth. Anyway, Lord Vishnu cheated the demons, he didn't get any of the nectar, the demigods got it all only Rahu, but his head touched by some of them. So the demons were very angry and had a big fight with the demigods on the shore of the Milk Ocean. But as the demigods, anyway, they're favored by the power of Lord Vishnu, and as the time factor was favoring them, they routed the demons, smashed them. Although in the battle of Bali Maharaj, at one point, very severely injured Indra and uh, Airavata, his elephant, was smashed unconscious. So at one point, the demons were winning the fight, and Lord Vishnu appeared on the battlefield on the back of Garuda. There's a picture here, a beautiful picture. I don't think you can see from the of Lord Vishnu appearing on the back of Garuda and routing the demons. So Bali Maharaj at that time told the demons that you better not fight. We can't we're not gonna win at this point. No hope. The time factor is not favoring us. So better don't fight now and we'll see what to do with you. So this time, Shukracharya, who is the guru of the demons, see if the demons are good, they don't have written it down. So he's the uh, guru of the demons. He revived the, yeah, the demons have been killed. So they were very grateful to and Bali Maharaj was the king of the demons, was very grateful. Now, it should be remembered that Bali Maharaj, he is the grandson of Talad Maharaj. Although he's born in a family of demons, his father was Virochana. He was born in a family of demons, but he's a great devotee. And although he'd been trained up by his father how to rule the demons, uh, he was actually closer to his grandfather who, although his grandfather had been the king of the demons previous, right, previously, you know, he was quite old, Prahlad Maharaj, of course he was a great devotee. So Prahlad Maharaj, throughout his life, was surreptitiously teaching whatever demons would listen to him about Krishna consciousness. So he trained up Bali, Bali Maharaj, his son, in Krishna consciousness. But Bali Maharaj was executing his worldly duty as the king of the demons. So he became very grateful to Shukracharya and he followed Shukracharya's advice and, by, and was performing sacrifices and by performing sacrifices and getting the blessings of Shukracharya, Bali Maharaj became very powerful. So much so that uh, Shukracharya, he said that now the time is right. Now you can again attack the demigods. This is 
the business of the demons. The demons means those powerful living beings who live in the lower planetary systems. So, Shukracharya advised Dali Maharaj. Now again, he would tell it. And they did. So much so that uh, Indra, when he saw the forces of Dali Maharaj surrounded the heavenly kingdom in which he lived, he approached Brihaspati and asked what to do. Brihaspati said, what to do? Get out of here. You have no chance to survive in this situation. Because Bali Maharaj has made a point of satisfying the Brahmanas. He's been blessed by the that I means Shukracharya and his family members. They're all descendants of Vidhumu. So, because he's done that, he's become very powerful now. So time is not favoring you. You leave here and we'll, again, we'll see what to do with you. So all the demigods, they took different forms. Maybe it was different animals or whatever. And in this way, got out of the heavenly planets. And Bali Maharaj took over the post of Indra. And having done that, he gradually made his position the ruler of the whole universe. Just like Hirani Kashipu, his great grandfather before him. By force, he took over the, the heavenly kingdom. Now, Aditi, who was the aunt of the demons and the mother of the demigods, she was upset because all her sons had been kicked out, headed by Indra. They lost their position. So, when Kashyap Muni, her husband, came back from performing austerities, he saw that his wife, Aditi, is very upset. So, what to do? What do you want? She, uh, she wanted to petition the Supreme Lord to Give Indra back this position. After all, Indra, my son, is the devotee. So how can we get his position back? So Keshav Muni told her the Payavata versus process of worship. It means living by drinking milk and worshipping the Supreme Lord in various ways. To petition the Supreme Lord that after all we are the demigods, we are your faithful servants. Please help us now. So after performing this for only nine days, the Supreme Lord appeared to Aditi and said, Yes, I will appear as your son and help you. Which he did. He appeared from her womb on this day. First of all, showed himself in the all opulent four handed Vishnu form. And then he took the form of a small dwarf, Brahmacharya. On his appearance, all the demigods, all the various crazy demigods in high planetary systems were very pleased and they showered flowers on the ashram of Kashyapamuni, covering it all with flowers. The Apsaras, the dancing gods of the heavenly planets, they all danced. So Bali Maharaj immediately, he took the form of a small boy, so immediately uh, all his ceremonies were performed. His birth ceremony, his name giving ceremony presumably was performed. And immediately he was given the, uh, also the Upanayana, the ceremony of giving him a Brahmin throne. The son God himself personally spoke the Gayatri Mantra, which is meant for the worship of the sun. Dali Maharaj was established in the heavenly planet. But Dali Maharaj knew that he can't stay here unless he has some kind of activity. He can't keep the position, he's taken the post of Indra artificially. But actually, the post of Indra is only meant for those who are highly pious. Generally, to take the post of Indra, you have to perform a hundred.
process of So, so Dali Maharaj has been doing this and Jiddu Kat a place on the last night of the Nama of the Nama has been selected as a very a special place for performing the sacrifices that is now the town of that place is now known as Bharat in Kuliya State of India. Uh, Ali Maharaj came down from the heavenly sun. Ramadhi came down from the heavenly sun to where Ali Maharaj was performing the sacrifice. And Ramadhi appeared, he was walking towards the sacrifice. When he appeared on the horizon, everyone saw a tremendous light in the sky, brighter than the sun. And gradually they saw in the distance a very small burning boy approaching. So they wondered, who is this? Is this the sun god himself personally come to accept the offering which was being offered in the time to him? Because one of the four commanders come to bless him. They've never seen or heard of such an important person. By those who told him, even so many great brahmanas in the assembly of Pali Maharaja testified, they are probably told him what he means. Generally, a brahmana or a brahmachari is the thousand. Because he is physically healthy and spiritually glowing with transcendental bliss. A brahmachari or a brahmana is glowing, but Brahman really glows so much that he now shone even the sun. I want to speak of the sun. So Bali Maharaj was very happy to receive him. He thought that I'm so fortunate to receive such a Brahman in his descendants because the appearance of an elevated Brahman in one's soul or in one's presence is always auspicious. So what to speak of as a sacrifice? One of the most important points of the sacrifice is to give charity profusely to Brahman. That makes the whole sacrifice very auspicious. By the blessings of the Brahmanas, uh, then the whole sacrifice becomes fruitful. And especially if the Bali Maharaj is I've got such a powerful, intelligent Brahman, certainly if I'm able to have the opportunity to give some charity to him, then I'm so much blessed, my sacrifice will be successful. So, Nani Maharaj, first of all, bowed down to me, washed his feet, took that water from his head, he did the custom, made it custom. Mm-hmm. The great person of the event, his feet should be washed from that water, sprinkled on the head of everybody. So Bali Maharaj was expressing gratefulness that you have come to bless my sacrifice. So presumably you have come to get something because an unknown Brahmana he comes to a sacrifice where a king is performing a sacrifice. It's understood generally that he wants some Dakshina, he wants some charity. So Bali Maharaj said, Well, what do you want? I, I happen to be ruling over the universe. So what do you want? Do you want horses, land? You want a wife, a wife, so what do you want? So, Brahman Dev said, Yes, I would like something. I would like to take three steps of land by my own measure. So, Brahman Dev said, Actually, you're only a small boy. You don't know what your real self is. If you want, I can give you a whole island. It's one of the one of the planetary systems. There's so many different islands. And then these planetary systems. I give you a whole planetary system. So you only want three steps of land by your own measurement. But our reputation of our family is that anyone who comes to us, they should not have to come again or to go to anyone else for charity. That is our reputation. You take as much as you need, 
more than you need, so that you will be satisfied. Let me take a little amount of land, what good is that? So Bhavandev said that, no, that's not correct. Brahmana should be satisfied just with what he needs. He shouldn't be greedy to have more. If you want, if a Brahmana wants more and more and more, then his brahminical power will be lost. So better I just take a little, not too much. So he's only a small boy. Three sets of land would be what? This much. That's how it appears. So, Bali Maharaj said, okay, if you insist, so be it, whatever you like. At this point, Shukracharya came and said, wait a minute. You don't know who this person is. This is Lord Vishnu, the old enemy, the old family enemy. Come to cheat you again. He's always cheating. Just like Hiranyakashipu said about Hiranyaksha, that my brother, he was the greatest fighter in the world, but just one moment he was inattentive, and the Lord, Lord Vishnu took advantage and killed him. Otherwise he could have never killed him. So like this, you know, it's all enemy, Lord Vishnu. You see, he cheated us out of the nectar, and he uh, cheated you by telling you to, tricking you into taking the wrong side of Vasuki. He's come to cheat you again. You see, this was to be. You have promised to give him three sets of land in charity. When you give it, he will occupy the three worlds. Shukracharya can understand what Lord Brahma Day's intention was. So Shukracharya, being the advisor of Dhamma Maharaj, went on to give him advice. Actually very good advice. If you are a Buddha, you see in this verse, Shukracharya has accused Dhamma Maharaj, Buddha, my fish, you say, Katama, you're a fool. How are you going to maintain yourself? If you did everything to Lord Vishnu, because he was thinking, Sukhacharya is thinking that the first and foremost activity is to see to your maintenance. Then you can think of other things. This is the most important thing. So he accused from his perspective, Ali Maharaj, you are in Buddha. Actually, Ali Maharaj told Brahmande, you are a Buddha. You don't, you're not intelligent, you don't know your self interest. But now, Shukracharya is telling Bali Maharaj, you are a Muha, you are a fool of the rascal, you don't know your self interest. But actually we are to see that even though Shukracharya is a great personality, he is great among the Muhas, because he doesn't know his real self interest, which is, as Prahlad told Hirani Kashipu and had been instructed by Maharaj also, the real self-interest, which demoniac people don't know, is to attain to the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. This is your real swartha, self-interest. So, Shukracharya went on to develop his thesis. That, you see, you already said you were given, but you should withdraw your promise. Under certain circumstances, to, to tell a lie under certain circumstances is not simple. If you, lie, you see, if you lie to save your kingdom, save your livelihood, if you lie in different circumstances, in, in love or war, there are no rules. But if you lie to bring a woman under control to seduce her, if you lie in war, or politics, in an emergency, and under certain circumstances, Shukracharya was establishing that lying is okay. So, uh, under this circumstance, it's better to lie, rather than tell the truth. And actually, Krishna himself, we find on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he told Arjuna, who had taken a vow, Anyone who told me to give up my Gandhi will go, I will kill him. So he came, circumstance came that Yudhishthir told him that. So Arjuna was ready to kill him. So Krishna told him, under the circumstances, better you tell a lie. Better to tell a lie than kill your brother. 
killing a brother is also not very religious. So don't kill your brother, tell him that. So, Bali Maharaj, he delivered What to do? My guru is telling me not to fulfill my promise to God. Now he's so much indebted because it's only by Shukacharya's mercy that he had attained to this position as the overlord of the universe. All along, Shukacharya can help him by And not only that, but Bali Maharaj is the king of the demons, and it was only with the demons' help that he was able to attain this position. And not only would Bali Maharaj lose his position if he gave everything to Brahmanji, but all the other demons who were depending on him, they would also be scattered here and there, smashed, defeated. So it wasn't only himself that was involved. He would be actually in dereliction of duty as the king of the demons by giving everything to Lord Vishnu. His family also, what, how he maintain his family, his citizens, his subjects. What to speak of his uh, prestige? They become most prestigious by conquering with military might the heavenly planets. But now he was if he was to give everything to Vishnu, cheated in such a way, he would be humiliated that a little boy could come up to him and just out of his sentiment, out of his foolishness, he would give everything to a little boy and just without any fight, without any uh, struggle, simply just in a second give everything to him. So he didn't have much time to think about it. He didn't have any warning. He didn't have Time to weigh the pros and cons. All of a sudden, the Vishnu was there, asking, and Shukracharya was warning, and he had to think what to do. He also knew that to disobey the orders of the Guru is very severe, but come to think of it, my Guru had been engaging me in the service of Lord Vishnu. Performing Yagya means to offer everything to Lord Vishnu. Of course, the Yagya, the different demigods, they're also called, but the Yagyeshva. The controller of the Yagya, Yagya Bhuk, the enjoyer of the sacrifice, is Lord Vishnu. So all along he's been engaging in service of Lord Vishnu. And when Lord Vishnu personally comes and asks me for charity, and I promise to give it to him, then how can, how can Shukracharya tell me not to do that? So it appears that he, although he's a guru, he's not properly acting as a guru. According to the Vedic conjunction, it's a severe crime to give up one's guru. But if the guru is not acting properly, then what should be done? Guru Apiyavalipta says, Kanya Kanya Majanasaha, Uttanda Patipanasya, Paritiago Vidhi, you say that Guru Api, even though one is guru, is worshipful, on whose grace, all blessings are there. If he's not properly situated, if he doesn't know how to properly instruct, if he was previously following properly but is now fallen into sense gratification, in all respects, he was to be rejected. So Bali Maharaj considered for some time and then he said, he will try to shoot out. Well, even if I do lose everything I give it to Lord Vishnu, ultimately, what do I lose? Because when I die, I can't take anything with me anyway. Whatever possessions I have, even if it be the whole universe, I can't keep with me. But if I do live in charity, then I will be famous. But then, then there will be something tangible in my life. There have been so many emperors and kings, will rule over great kingdoms. They have come and gone like dust blowing in the wind. But great personalities in the past, like Adichi and Shidi, they gained universal fame, eternal fame, by sacrificing not only their possessions but their very body for the sake of others. So where is the harm in giving away 
Furthermore, if I give to Lord Vishnu, that is most glory. You have to give to any to give charity is is glorious. But to give charity to Lord Vishnu, even though he come in the form of a Brahmana to cheat me, I do not want to turn him There's nothing that the earth cannot bear. The earth bears mountains, huge mountains. The earth bears huge armies, but the earth feels discomfort only upon bearing a lion. The earth is not like a lion. Everything else she just like a mother. There's the weight, even the child may be heavy. The earth bears without feeling, without feeling any discomfort. But the earth is very dissatisfied with the mother. So I have decided that uh, I shall certainly give everything to the Lord. And therefore he has a formality. He offered the pot of water and then affirm his intention to give everything to the Krishna. So, as predicted by Shukracharya, the powerful Brahman, we understand what was going on. Dharma Dev expanded his body so it became bigger and bigger and bigger and the whole universe was seen within him. His body he filled all the different directions stretch out his arms in all the different directions around the cup. So in one step, um, he covered the lower part of the universe, and with the second step, he covered the upper, even beyond the heavenly planets, which would be up to the heavenly planets, was the, and down was the domain of Bali Maharaj. But his foot went even beyond the heavenly planets, and above the right Above the planets of the Rishis, Mahaloka, Janaloka, Kapaloka, right up to Satyala, Lord Brahma, so the foot of Lord Vishnu is expanding above and going right up. And Lord Brahma worshipped that foot and poured some water to Abhishek, that water became the younger water. And again his foot went right up, went through the covering of the universe. And the cause of ocean water, open and so those waters merged together, the water of Lord Ganga, Kamanda, and the water of the Ganga merged, and they became the Ganga, sacred Ganga, Ganga is Chandana of Lord Vishnu. So in this way, Lord Vishnu covered the whole universe. Two steps. Then uh, again he assumed uh, what we might say the more normal size form of form that we can deal with. And Garuda, understanding the intention of Bamandu, arrested Bali Maharaj, who is now nothing. He was no longer the king of the universe because he had all been taken away from him. The rest of him with the Nagapasha, snake like ropes of Varuna. So, in this way, he was, on one second, he was the king of the universe, ruling over everything, performing sacrifices in all glory and honor. The next second, he was a beggar. Reduced to nothing. So, different demigods came and they prayed, they came to pray Lord Vishnu. Lord Brahma was about to speak, but Bali Maharaja's wife, Vindhyava, interrupted. Lord Brahma is there, but Vindhyavala interrupted before Brahma could speak and said, uh, Actually, my husband, he was thinking everything belongs to him, that he can give in charity. But actually he was wrong because nothing belongs to him. Everything belongs to you anyway. <coughs> so in this way, even his wife, she was appealing to Lord Vishnu for mercy. 
But at the same time, she was pointing out that you should, you should be kind to him because, after all, he was foolishly in the bodily concept of life, thinking everything belongs to him. So, Ramande, he challenged Bhagavad Gita. Actually, you should go to hell for something. You should go down to the world Because you are a liar. You see, you took everything away from me. You were simply a liar. You said you could give me in charity three sets of land and my own measurement, but you don't have enough to give me. Whatever you had, I covered with two sets. You see, what a rascal you are. You promised to give me a Brahmana, I came to your sacrifice, you said you'd give whatever I wanted, and you can't even do it. So Bali Maharaj said, I can think of it a place. There's one thing left for me. I gave you everything in the universe, but there's one thing more left. That is my head, my body. You please put your, put your lotus foot on my head. And in this way, make me your property also. I will become your bonded slave. So Dali Maharaj, Dhanandai, uh, after telling Dali Maharaj, that you'll have to go to the heavenly planets for some time. You should go to hell for having not fulfilled the promise. And he was very pleased with Dali Maharaj and said that, yes, you go to the lower planets, there's one lower planetary system called Sutala, which is better than the heavenly planet. You go and live there. And, you know, Indra is my brother, and, you know, you have to do something for your family. So, let him take the heavenly planet now. You go back to the heavenly, you can become Indra later on, but just for now, you enjoy there in Sutala, in the Sutala planetary system, which is a very beautiful planetary system. You be happy there. Don't attack Indra anymore. He's always bothering you. Just leave him, let him rule over the universe. And I will come and live with you. I am the brother of Indra. And after all, I have to see to the anyway. But actually, I like you very much. So I will come and stay with you. And if anyone gives you any harassment, I will see to them. Any problems? Call me. I'll be your, I'll be the doorkeeper. So no one no one, uh, none of, no enemies, no one can come in. So in this way, Bali Maharaj gave himself to Lord Ramadan. Bali, the very word means sacrifice. It's unlimited. What sacrifice? We are, we are afraid to whatever little possessions we have, whether it's just a few persons or whatever it is. We are attached. Bali Maharaj possessed the whole universe. In a second, even though he had taken it from great endeavor, in a second he was willing to give it up. He is the personification of Krishna's instruction to give up all varieties of religion, whatever it may be, give up everything and just surrender to me. I will protect you, Krishna. So Bali Maharaj gave him, gave him everything he had, plus his own body and his heart and soul to Vamandir. And as a result, Ramande gave himself to Bali Maharaj. I will be your servant. Yes, you are my servant. I accept your foot, your your head under my foot, but I will reciprocate. I like to serve you. So don't keep it. And even Lord Krishna, later on when he came to this planet, he made a point. He, he used to go to so many places visiting Astina or Kumbina and Kashi. He also made a point of going down to the planet of Bali Maharaj to visit him. So, he's so much merciful. Yeah. Bali Maharaj, all the time, just like Tulad Maharaj, on Tulad Maharaj's instruction, he was always thinking of Lord Vishnu. But he was in a position, not very favorable situation for executing devotion service. Sometimes we hear that well, the devotees are living at home, and well, my family members are not very favorable. But certainly, Bali Maharaj, surrounded by demons like Kalanemi and Viprachiti and Rahu, 
all nasty demons who were very envious of the Supreme Lord. That he wasn't at all in a good situation for executing Krishna consciousness. But he always remembered the Supreme Lord. And now he did his duty, his worldly duty, as the king of the demons. He was always thinking how to satisfy Lord Vishnu. So ultimately, Lord Vishnu gave him the opportunity to satisfy him, Lord Vishnu, in a way that, in, in a superlative way, that no one, no one can imagine. As a king, he is an uh, ambitious king, likes to rule over a country. Pani Maharaj was able to rule everything. So he, his worldly ambition was fulfilled to an extent that no one can imagine. So, Vamande gave him the opportunity to, to give the ultimate surrender, to give up everything, everything you have, the whole universe. Want to give it in charity? Who can give charity? No one can give charity like Father Maharaj. Because he gave everything to Lord Vishnu. Therefore, he has become eternal, the example of Atmanivedana, giving up one's whole self, giving up everything in one's possession for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu. So how much satisfied Lord Vishnu was with him? Actually not even so much satisfied with Indra. Indra got his kingdom, he got it back, but he didn't get the same mercy that Bali Maharaj got. So this, uh, this whole sequence is how Ali Maharaj is cheated by Dharmandev, how he ties him up, threatens to send him to hell, lies to him, cheats to him, cheats him. It is all, it may appear as something not very nice, just like the gopis who are accusing Krishna that we heard from Purnamath, who's learned. She told that in previous lives, you see, Ali Maharaj, he was willing to you see, he was willing to give to you, and you're so greedy, you just took everything he had from him. We know your character. The gopis were accusing Krishna. And this Suparnaka, she was simply she's just a nice young lady and for no reason at all you cut off her nose. So we know what kind of person you are, Krishna. You're just a big cheater. So it's a fact. Krishna is a big cheater. When it comes to cheating, no one can cheat like Krishna. But that cheating, just everything Krishna does, is not a cause of distress, it's not a cause of anxiety. It's a cause of great transcendental bliss and the highest wealth of the history. And this is the beautiful pastime that the Bhamande is exhibiting. That devotees, even now, they can remember the extraordinary surrender of Bali Maharaj and the extraordinary Mercy upon him, given by Lord Vishnu and Ramamde. Dai Ramanavatari ki jai, Bali Maharaj ki jai, Sri Lopad ki jai, Hare Can I ask a question? All right. No, that I said that took over the universe came from the heavenly planet down. I said that. Because when Lord Vishnu he took his foot and went up above the heavenly planet and even beyond that, which is beyond the jurisdiction of of uh, Bali Maharaj, from the heavenly planet down. But then the planets of the Rishis. I guess uh, the demons weren't much interested in them anyway, because they're only suitable for for meditation and austerity. So, and then, let, them, let those wishes and sages, let them meditate and we'll enjoy on the heavenly planet. The Lord Brahma, he was going on with his meditation. And then, going on with his meditation.